Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the shaft from this brushless outrunner motor. Here is the motor that I will be working with today. This is an NTM prop drive V2 5050 that I got from Hobby King. I'm using two of these for the um, weapon on my 30 pound combat robot crippling depression. And so two of these drive in tandem the weapon. And I need to do a couple things with this. One, I need to make this shaft a little bit shorter. And secondly, I wanna make it a little bit thicker. As you can maybe kind of see, this is actually an eight millimeter shaft back here. And then it goes down to a six millimeter up here. And if we look at one of the removed drive shafts, this is what it looks like. And you can see it steps down two millimeters. So I want this to be a solid eight millimeters throughout to get as much, you know, heft out of it. So what we'll need to do is take the motor apart, remove the old shaft like this, and then replace it with a new eight millimeter rod like this. So um, yeah, let's um, first start by disassembling the motor. The first step to taking this motor apart is to remove the snap ring. I'm gonna remove the snap ring with some pliers here. There we go. And after you get that off, there's a little brass washer that you want to get out of there as well. It will kind of get bind up if you try and take this apart. So there we have it. The two halves of the motor are actually separate, but the magnet is holding it in place. So get a firm grasp on one side and then pull it apart. It might be a little tricky to get apart. I'm gonna grab a rag. And there we go. So I got that apart. So now we have the two halves. You can go ahead and set this aside for now. We're not really gonna need this for anything. Um, as you can see, our new shaft is gonna fit in there just fine. We're not gonna make any modifications to this. So we'll set this aside. And now we need to get the shaft out of this rear housing. So now we need to remove the shaft from the rear housing and it is held in place by a set screw there and a set screw there. And as you can see on this shaft, there's a flat and another flat and there's definitely some thread locker or some Loctite on that. So these Allen keys are not really that easy to get off. I recommend using a high quality set of Allen keys for this purpose. If you use a low quality set or if you use the wrong size, you're gonna have a bad time. You're going to round off the heads on these and you're never gonna get this shaft out because it is in a slot there. So you can't just press it out. So get yourself a high quality set of Allen keys and make sure they're the right size. These are gonna be metric, so make sure you use metric. If you use the wrong size and it wiggles, you're just gonna round it off and ruin it. So get the Allen key in there and just loosen it. It will take a lot more effort than you think. Additionally, you could also use a torch or something like that to heat these joints and loosen up the thread locker. I didn't have to do that. I could just use the Allen key directly, but if you're having a hard time with it, you can use some heat to loosen them up. So that's one of them loosened. And there's the second one. And you wanna loosen these out quite a bit because once again, they're in these little grooves or slots. So you can't just loosen them a tiny bit. You really have to back them out quite a ways and you'll start to feel when they kind of loosen up a little bit. They're still pretty tight right now. And there we go, now they're a little bit looser. So that's one. Okay. Now, you think you'd be able to just pull this shaft out, but it's still held in there pretty tight. So I'm gonna bring this over to the Arbor Press and press this shaft out. I just recently got this Arbor Press and I honestly can't imagine how I lived without one. It's a really handy tool to have, especially for stuff like this. They're relatively inexpensive. You can check out Craigslist. You can pick something like this up for like 50 bucks and it's well worth having, especially if you're gonna be doing this stuff a lot. If you don't have an arbor press, you can just kind of replicate this setup. You just need some flat surface that you can set this on with a hole in the middle. You can stack up some wood, stack up some blocks, something like that. And you just need to have this on a nice good surface and then press that shaft 
downwards. Um, you can use something like this and then tap on it with a rubber mallet. There's a couple different ways that you could do it, but the Arbor Press is gonna be the preferred way. So I'm just using a smaller shaft to set on top, and then I'm just gonna press this down. It doesn't take a whole lot. You traditionally don't want that to drop on the ground, but that's okay. So there you go. So now the shaft is completely gone from that outer housing. Now that everything's disassembled, we need to make the new shaft. Here's the old one. Here is a shaft I'm gonna be using. Um, I got this from Servo City. This is an eight millimeter by 100 millimeter. They only had 50 and 100 millimeters, so I will have to cut this down. The original was a 75, and I'm probably gonna end up with like a 70 or something. I'm not 100% sure. I gotta kinda just cut it to size. So I'm gonna take this shaft, and then I'm going to cut it down to 75, and then we're going to put the groove in it, and then put these little flats in it, and I'm also gonna add another flat for the pulleys on this side. So let's cut this down on the bandsaw. Now that I've got the shaft cut to size or rough size, I'm just gonna mount it into the lathe and then just kind of face off the end and clean that up a little bit. There it is, all nice and clean. So now I have an eight millimeter shaft that is almost the exact same length as the original. The next step is to cut this snap ring groove in there. I'm gonna be using a grooving or a parting tool. This is a 40 thal parting tool. So in theory, I'll just put it in the lathe, make that little um, pass and that should be easy. If you don't have a lathe, you could use a Dremel. And actually the Dremel might be the easier way to do this. You would just need to spin this shaft in something and then just use like a cutoff wheel or something just to add a little groove in there. This is, um, I think it's like 30, 35 thal. So the 40 thal should be just right. And the reason I'm doing this um, groove first is so that I can kind of adjust where it is and everything. I want that groove to hit just right. So I'll kind of put that, you know, wherever it needs to go. And I can always shave off the ends um, to make it fit the way I want. So I'm gonna put this back on the lathe and then just make a little groove in there for the snap ring. I'm gonna mark the location for this with some bluing ink. And then I'm just gonna, gonna scribe it with the um, calipers to give me a better idea where the location is gonna be. And that line is going to be the outside of the little groove. I messed around with the parting tool on its own and unfortunately it's so thin that it's gonna wanna wobble around. So what I ended up doing is using a um, thread cutting tool. This is um, for threading and I'm gonna make a groove with that first and then come in with the parting tool and it won't wobble around as much. So I'm gonna center this kind of offset from that line just a little bit. And I'm just gonna cut a shallow groove into that. And switch over to the parting tool. And then reposition. There we go. And there we have it. There's a nice little groove. Let's check and see if the snap ring fits. So 
here it is. It looks like a nice, decent groove. The width looks good. Be a little tricky to get on here. Yep, that fits great. It's got a little bit of wobble, but that should be just fine. So now the next step is to put this all together with this in the right location, and then I'm gonna tighten the set screws. That will give me little indents on the shaft so I can then grind down um, to make these little slots for the set screws. So I'm gonna put this thing all together. This might not show up well on camera, but you can maybe see that there's a little set screw right there. And then another little indent right there. So that's perfect. So we need to cut a little slot right there and there, and then a little slot right there and there. So now it's time to break out the Dremel and grind down a little bit of a flat. Now that the shaft has been ground, I've got a little flat there, and I've got a little flat there. It is time to reassemble everything. I used a little bit of Scotch-Brite just so I didn't have any burrs on this, but it was actually pretty flat. So I'm just gonna slide that down through, make sure I line it up with my set screws here. About like that. I'm gonna loosely tighten these for now. I might need to adjust them a little bit with the um, snap ring. So I'm just going to get them to where they're kind of touching. And of course, be careful when you reassemble this. You don't want the two halves to slam into each other. You could damage your magnets. So I kind of put my fingers out here, let the magnetic field kind of hit, and then just slowly pull it in like that. So it actually looks pretty good. Let me put this ring on there. And then the snap ring. One well, of the nice things about these channel locks is they can do internal and external, but they kind of get locked up sometimes, so. Okay, so shaft actually needs to be pushed in just a little bit more, so I'm gonna loosen it up and then just slide it in ever so slightly. just like that. So it's still nice and free. There's good pressure on here. I can't move these back and forth. So now it's time to fully secure these down. And there's still a little bit of um, thread lock in there that you can feel, so this should tighten up nice. And there you have it. A nice free spinning motor with an eight millimeter shaft instead of this puny little six millimeter. Here it is up close to the original one. So you can see that this is a much beefier, much stronger shaft, hopefully. And um, I'm just going to grind away a flat for the pulley once I get that situated, but otherwise this should be done. So thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you learned it isn't that daunting to take one of these apart. If you like my videos, check out my Facebook page and check out my Patreon to support me or check out the other channels I support. Thanks for watching.